Okay, for more, let's bring in former OMB director under President Reagan, David Stockman. David, um, welcome to the show. Let's start first with Comey's testimony. The ousted FBI director accusing President Trump of being a liar. Take a listen. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. That combination of things I'd never experienced before, but it led me to believe I got to write it down, and I got to write it down in a very detailed way. David, great to have you on the show. I want to know what you make of those remarks. Well, first of all, I think the testimony was one big, fat, nothing burger. There was nothing new. There was nothing about obstruction of justice. It was the same self-serving Tommy rot that Comey has been leaking for weeks now. Uh, and uh, But on the other hand, I don't take uh, any um, assurance from that. The all clear, I think, is the wrong conclusion. If the Senate can involve itself in something this groundless, it's just more hysteria about Russiagate for which there is no evidence. If they can bog themselves down in this, we have a dysfunctional, ungovernable situation in Washington. The idea that there's only seven weeks left before the August recess and they're going to be succumbing soon to a debt ceiling crisis that in that environment, if you think there's going to be tax reform or infrastructure or stimulus or even a functioning government and uh, not a shutdown come August, September, when they have no borrowing authority or continuing resolution, uh, I don't know what Wall Street is smoking. You, they ought to be getting out of the casino while it's still safe. And yet uh, there's this idea that since uh, he wasn't incriminated today, that proves uh, we can, uh, you know, move on, uh, you know, look uh, somewhere else. I, I think it's crazy. Okay, so your takeaway from this is that there was nothing necessarily in the testimony, but as I said before, that this is a massive distraction for the administration. Yeah, it's a total distraction, but it tells you you really don't even have a president. You have a non-functional government. Uh, Flynn did nothing wrong. He had a phone call with the ambassador from Russia, which he's supposed to do. That's what Kissinger did with the KGB in 1968. That's what Reagan's people did in 1980. This is a huge nothing burger, but you don't take comfort from that. You get worried about that because the system is determined to unseat Donald Trump. Did They're determined to relitigate the election. And in that environment, and I say it's the deep state, I say it's the sanctimonious fool, uh, Comey, and all of his uh, minions that mean we're in big trouble in this country. We're going to have a breakdown of democracy. That's what's underway here. David, market participants are not oblivious to this. How come they're buying in right now? I don't think they're buying in. I think the robo-machines and the day traders are just tagging uh, points on the charts. Uh, we uh, touched 24.39 a few days ago. They're trying to do it again. It's completely meaningless. But one of these days, somebody's going to wake up and find out we don't have a government. We don't have a fiscal plan. We have a Fed that's going to be uh, totally, uh, you know, uh, disunited and uh, fragmented very soon as new people come on. And they're going to get scared to death and they're going to start selling, and there will be no support below. So, uh, you know, this is one of the most dangerous market environments we've ever been in. It's the calm before a gigantic, horrendous storm that I don't think is too far down the road. Jeff Kilberg. Hey, David, thanks for being here. We have seen the S&P 500 up about 25% since President Trump won the election November 8th. Right now we're pegged at all-time highs. I think you're absolutely right. There's so much uh, dysfunction in Washington or potentially a conflict with our administration and another administration overseas. But what is that catalyst? And more importantly, what can the stock market fall in the S&P 500 in the event all of your uh, forecasting comes to fruition? Well, look, I think it could easily fall to 1,600 or below. I mean, the idea that you're trading at 25 times, uh, uh, you know, reported earnings 100 months into an expansion with no government, a Fed that's out of uh, dry powder, a world economy that's still shaky, a, you know, situation in China that is going to get a lot worse before it gets better, uh, flare-ups all over the world, and if in that environment you want to keep buying, you know, hitting the, the buy key at 25 uh, times, uh, be my guest, but there is really no basis for it. 
But David, isn't that the point that investors have been buying into this market because despite um, how unstable we may seem to be here globally, it's worse? Uh, no, I, I don't think they're, that's why. I think the machines are buying because uh, the machines have been rewarded for buying the dips, and that'll work and work and work and work until it doesn't. There is nothing rational about this market. It's just a machine trading driven, uh, you know, bubble that's uh, nearing some kind of uh, all time uh, 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 craziness, mania. Jim, question. David, two parts. Um, the first one, you mentioned that they won't stop till they get him out of office or whatever the, the conclusion would be. Yeah. Do you believe that's really going to happen, that they're going to knock him out? And then the second part would be about a President Pence. Do you think that that would restore some sort of pro-business calm to the market if it ever happened? Well, you know, if it, it's going to happen, not if it ever happens, but it won't be for a while because the Republican elders will not move against him until they see the polls showing a complete wipeout in November 19, uh, 2018. And when they get to that point, which may be late this fall, or early next winter, they will find a way to invoke some variation of the 25th Amendment and, uh, you know, put him on the helicopter just like they did Nixon, uh, even though it was too late. I think they learned the lesson. They waited till August uh, 1974. They put Nixon on the helicopter. The Republicans got wiped out in the Watergate election. Uh, I think some of these guys running the show down there remember that, and they're not going to let it happen this time. Now, uh, David, last question. If this is the calm before the storm, what is going to be the kind of trigger event, um, as far as you see it, where the market is going to wake up and say, okay, we have a problem? I think the trigger event is going to be the debt ceiling firestorm, which we'll be into within weeks. Remember, there's only seven weeks left before August. There's $150 billion left on the uh, Treasury cash drawer a couple days ago. That's down $130 billion just since late. April. They'll be out of cash. They'll be out of debt ceiling. They have no plan, organization, preparation for a debt ceiling increase. The government is going to go into crisis before the market even realizes what's happening at a time when uh, the White House is going to be totally on the defensive when you have a wounded uh, you know, warrior in the Oval Office, and that is going to scare the living daylights out of them because this is not August 211, where you had a president who believed more debt is better, and you had a middle of the road Republican leader who was willing to capitulate when push came to shove. Right now, the Freedom Caucus controls the House, they will not vote for a debt ceiling increase clean. And that means that, you know, we're going to be in a crisis and shutdown mode within 70 days. Okay, David, thank you, as always, uh, for joining us on the show with your insight.